It is crossover night in the Mid-American Conference. And tonight at the Convocation Center in DeKalb, it matches a couple of teams, Bowling Green and Northern Illinois University, in desperate need of victories. The hometown fans like it. The Huskies 7-1 at home. Bowling Green wins on the road. Six true road wins this season for the Falcons. And hi again, everybody. Dave Bernhardt along with Carl Armato. We come to you tonight with a couple of teams that are you know, struggling just a little bit. Northern Illinois has dropped four of its last five games. Bowling Green has only won one of its last three. It's a pretty big ball game tonight for these people. Yeah, for both teams, Dave, and uh, you're getting to the point in the season now where these conference games are very important for the uh, seedings and uh, should be competitive because you got Northern who plays well at home, plays with a lot of confidence. you got Bowling Green, as you mentioned, good on the road. And for Northern Illinois, he leads the conference in scoring 19 and a half points per game. He does it so many different ways. He can go inside, he can go outside, and that is Eugene German. And he's so quick. Uh, in transition, he's almost unstoppable. Uh, can get to the free throw line, can pull up for the jumper, uh, shoot the three, as you say, very versatile guard. You talk about unstoppable, how about for Bowling Green? DiMaggio Wiggins, five straight games Double doubles, in fact, against Northern Illinois in a Falcons win two weeks ago, 15 points and 15 rebounds. Yeah, and he can score inside. He has the ability, Dave, to draw fouls. He's been to the line 113 times, almost 50 times more than the next player on Bowling Green. Northern's going to have their hands full inside of him, and he's a good free throw shooter, shooting about 70%, which is pretty good for a big man. Bowling Green dropped an 84-75 game to Central Michigan on Saturday. That was a heartbreaker. They led by 15 in the second half before giving it away. That's their starting lineup. Great balance scoring. Four players averaging in double figures, led by Justin Turner's 16.2 points per game. And for Northern Illinois University, same sort of story. On the road at Akron, a place that NIU has not won since 2008, fell to the Zips, 82-67. Akron knocking down 15 threes. A little bit of a change in the starting lineup tonight for Northern Illinois. It is Justin Thomas picking up the start for Eugene German. We will see German, but Thomas, no stranger to the starting lineup. This is his 11th start of the year. So the big three for the starting members of this team, uh, Carl, uh, down to the big two in Dante Thorpe and Levi Bradley. Yeah, and I'll tell you, if you're bowling green, it's, it couldn't have been a better situation for them to walk into, Dave. You mentioned coming off a very disappointing loss. They want to get that uh, bad taste out of their mouth as quickly as possible. You know what, with German out of lineup, they might be able to get off to a quick start here. Might give them some confidence, momentum, going into the start of this game. There is Eugene German. Uh, we'll see how long it takes for him to emerge off of the bench. First game that German has not started this season. He averages almost 30 minutes per game. But we'll go up at half court with DiMaggio Williams along with Lacey James. And it will be the Falcons with it first. Our officials tonight, Paul Zeck, Ray Peroni, and Chad Barlow working this game in DeKalb. Coke inside. That shot's blocked by Bradley. And here is Justin Thomas at the point. Gurgis Dow coming off a career high 14 points against Akron on Saturday. Thorpe gets the touch up top. A little floater will go. Dante Thorpe. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that shot is tougher than it looks, Dave. That's something you've got to work on daily in practice to perfect it, that floater. You've got to have a great touch on that. So you can tell he's put the work in. Once again, Coke gets a touch. They look inside for Wiggins. Nice catch. And then the turnover. Bowling Green, as we said, had a 15-point second-half lead against Central Michigan. And then the Chippewas knocked down seven of eight three-pointers in one stretch. Ended up winning by nine. In fact, CMU took advantage of 18. Bowling Green turnovers scored 25 points. Let's see whether the Huskies can do it here. And Thorpe wanted it again, but instead an offensive foul. Lacey James will pick up that foul. Four players in double figures, Justin Turner, 16.2. Wiggins at 14.0. Dylan Fry, great shooter from the outside, 13.7 in the point guard. Roderick Caldwell at 10.9. Wiggins muscles his way in on James with a sweet baby hook.
Last time these teams played, Northern Illinois only scored 19 points in the first half. That's a season low allowed by Bowling Green in one half this season. Coke picks up the first foul for Bowling Green. James from distance. How about that? James comes in to this game, averaging 4.7 points per game. Scoring has picked up a little bit lately. I'll double up on Wiggins down low. Playing off the glass, and the Huskies will have it. Well, you have 6'10", DiMaggio Wiggins, 240-pounder. Derek Koch, 6'9", 260. And you can see Bowling Green's playing right, uh, right off the bat to get the ball into Wiggins in Northern, showing the fact that they might double him at times. I think they're going to play the guessing game. We have some uh, quick whistles tonight. They're not allowing anybody to do too much banging here early. Coke just picked up his second foul, and we've only played about two and a half minutes. And also during that whistle, Daquan Plowden, 6'6", 195-pound freshman from Philadelphia, enters for the Falcons, and Noah McCarty comes in for NIU. Here's the freshman, Wiggins. He just picked that ball off the glass, switched to his left hand, and made it look easy. Well, he shows you why. He's double-double uh, material because he's hitting the boards early. Five straight. He's also the second leading rebounder in the MAC at nine and a half per game. Levi Bradley works on Plowden. The freshman comes away with it. Justin Turner, redshirt freshman, has it now. Be a good matchup inside with McCarty and Wiggins. Hardy will provide the muscle. Wiggins the touch up top. Caldwell, tough shot. Oh, my. Roger Caldwell. Roderick Caldwell. And I would think we'll see German pretty soon here, Dave, because this, these conference games are important. And I would have thought by the uh, four-minute mark, the uh, media timeout, he'd get in. Well, there must be a direct feed from your microphone to the NIU bench because he was coming off just as you brought up his name. He's waiting at the scorer's table. Three ball. Missed everything, and NIU will have it. German will enter the game at the 16.05 mark. Head coach Mark Montgomery in his seventh season at Northern Illinois University, 84 124. Of course, 10 seasons, assistant coach at Michigan State a couple of years ago, a 21 win season here in DeKalb. Bradley, the spin, the soft roll. Three different Huskies have scored, and we're tied at six. Wiggins, good entry from Fry. From the corner, Plowden. That's a second three ball air ball. Thorpe, great moves to get there and could not finish. Uh, he did everything but finish. Great footwork, great spin, fake. Just didn't put it in the, in the basket. I tell you, McCarty's got his hands full because they're looking to Wig Wiggins, and he is long, and he's aggressive. Get a little help there from German. They'll get the touch back into Wiggins. Boy, McCarty didn't give any ground, but a great move from DiMaggio Wiggins for his third basket of the night. If Northern lets him catch there, they'll be in for a long night, Dave, because he is a he's a man down there. German trying to shake free from Caldwell. Can't do it. Thomas. Husky three. 
Justin Thomas with the three, his 17th of the season. Really, when you look at Thomas, he's a player off the bench, so it's nice to get those bench points uh, from your team. You're going to need them in this conference game. Foul starting to add up a little each way. When we come back, we'll have a couple more substitutions for Northern Illinois. Early going, a one-point game, and Justin Thomas's three, the difference in this one. DiMaggio Wiggins, six of the eight points for the Falcons. He's tough. The head coach for Bowling Green is Michael Huger in his third season, returning to his alma mater. Huger, a uh, point guard for the Falcons back in the 89 through 93 seasons. All Mac, his final two years there. Nice little coaching run, assistant coach at Miami, and George Mason, and probably the best part, Carl, of uh, Mike Huger's uh, time at Bowling Green. That's where he met his wife, Tanya. Great story. And I'll tell you what, uh, if you fall off the uh, Jim Laranaga, you know, coaching tree, that, that's pretty impressive. And I'll tell you, the way they play their guards, you could tell that uh, they're an extension of their coach who was a point guard. Caldwell, Fry, I'm very Im impressed with how they get the ball inside to, to Wiggins. I mean, they are really feeding the post, and, you know, and, and that's where their bread's going to be buttered. So they give the guards credit because he's scoring, but somebody's got to give him the ball. Caldwell with four points, Wiggins with six. That's the 10 for Bowling Green. The Falcons come in third in conference and scoring almost 80 points per game. That's a number that has grown in Huger's time at Bowling Green. He has really picked up that offensive pace. Speaking of offense, here's your max leading scorer, German, to Bradley. Soft touch from Levi Bradley, he has four. And you could see a Bowling Green defensively. Caldwell was really trying to harass uh, German. We'll see if that continues all night. Did a nice job on him on that uh, end of the floor. Jeffrey Uju into the ball game now for Bowling Green. Uju not too far from here. Bowling Brook and a soft one inside for Turner. Well, and if you're Northern, you got to expect that day because uh, Wiggins goes out in the next you know leading score. The overall league score is Turner. Conference, it's Wiggins. But overall, season, it's you got to know that. And I would think you might try and help really hard off him. German answers with a three ball of his own. His first points of the night. Didn't take him long to get involved. Sat out about the first four minutes. We traded lead. Six lead changes already, and we have... Played just a little over seven minutes. Eugene German scores from all over the floor. This is his 32nd three of the season. Uh, NIU does not shoot threes. They've only made this year only 107, and 32 of those have come from German. Huskies two and four in MAC play in the West, tied for fourth. Bowling Green, their three and three mark is good for a three-way tie for second in the East. And that's a walk on Antoine Lillard. Lillard had a good ball game against NIU the last time these teams played two weeks ago. He had eight points, six rebounds, and four assists coming off the bench. This is an interesting lineup Northern has in. They have Thorpe, they have uh, German, and they have Bradley out of their lineup. So it's going to be interesting to see where they get their scoring from. Demo Gerontis into the ball game. He gives it up to Dow. Lacey James able to hang on. Good hands. Also into the game is Rod Henry Hayes. Very much a different look for NIU. Shot clock down to four. Thomas. Got some iron rebound, Dow. Henry Hayes will get it in to James. Battling against Uju with the left hand. I know the staff's been looking for James to be a force down low. We'll see if that gets him some confidence. Couple of baskets here tonight. Kick out, open three. Down it goes. Nelly Cummings off the bench. A 
One point lead in the ball for the Huskies. I believe James wide open nearly made them pay in a big time rebound. Snatched out of there by Daquan Plowden. Turner lets it fly. And from the look on his face, it appears as if Anastasio Stimogerantes will be whistled for that foul. We've had four ties. We've had six lead changes. And Northern Illinois getting some production from Lacey James, 6'9", junior, from Grand Rapids, Michigan. The third annual Victory Ball NIU's premier fundraising event is set for Saturday, April 14th, 2018 in a new location, the NIU Naperville Conference Center. This elegant evening includes a cocktail reception, live and silent auctions, and special guest details on how to register for this one-of-a-kind evening are coming soon. Victory E Ball. Eugene German on the bench with a couple of personal fouls for Northern Illinois. And on the other side, Derek Koch for Bowling Green. He picked up two quick ones as well. Nellie Cummings controls up top. Knocked away from Wiggins. Thorpe to Thomas. And he'll start it between the circles. And Carl, we go back to, you say, two of your... Leading scores, two of your three scores need to be on the floor at the same time. Right now, only one, just Dante Thorpe. Levi Bradley will check in next. Looks like now they got you plugged into the <laughs> bench over there. Five, four. Thorpe's going to have to force it up. There's Wiggins. His fourth rebound already. Dylan Fry has been quiet tonight. Fry has it just inside the arc. Dylan Fry, 6'2", sophomore from Miami, Florida. Tell you, Bowling Green's tough team to guard because Wiggins is so good inside, and they shoot almost 39% uh, from three, which is a really good percentage anytime you're close to 40. So Northern's really going to have to defend and be on their toes and play with a lot of energy. Those three-point percentage number is good for second in the conference. Lacey James muscles his way in. So maybe here is some unexpected scoring for the Huskies. We trade the lead back and forth. Lillard got all the way there and then picks up the foul. <laughs> Levi Bradley in. Rod Henry Hayes for the Huskies. Checking back in is Justin Turner for the Falcons. Four ties, eight lead changes. Biggest lead we've had tonight has been just four points. James on Wiggins here. Bradley on Uju. Running ahead and too much for Cummings. I think Dylan Fry thought uh, DiMaggio Wiggins was running that break as high as that ball went. Sure did. I'll tell you, it was the uh, right idea. He was open. He was ahead of him, but uh, just poor execution. But good pass, and they'd have had an easy basket. Nellie Cummings couldn't get there. Six footer. Henry Hayes will get it to James. Contact, count it, and one. Tell you what, it looks like James came to play tonight, Dave. He's already at his average. He has eight points tonight. The last time these teams played, he was scoreless. Lacey James, 6'9", junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Had to sit out last year after transferring from Ryder. Now 19 games through his first season, first playing season with NIU, and he'll have a seat. He has nine Northern Illinois, 21 points. I would think you're at the 852 mark. I would think he would sit until the next media timeout and then go in because when a player's playing well, you don't you want to stay in rhythm, don't want him to sit too long. Dave, you say, hey, give 46 seconds here, get a blow, and then go back in. Wiggins asking for the ball once again. 
Going to have to double him if, he, if Bradley stays on him because that combination of size and strength, too overpowering for uh, Bowling Green. Loose ball will come out of there. Huskies on the move. Thorpe. Dante Thorpe, his second basket. Biggest lead of the night at six. Wigan scored three quick baskets. He's been quiet since then. But on the offensive glass, Justin Turner will finish it. Turner looks like he plays taller than his size. He got up for that rebound uh, extremely high. He's a 6'4", redshirt freshman from Detroit. Bradley. Cummings, numbers against him. Good choice. Three from the corner for Turner. Henry Hayes will give it up quickly. Bradley works in on Uju, and that was a mismatch right there. The experience of Levi Bradley. And Bradley so long his length. He plays taller than that 6'8". Plays like a seven-footer. Once again, the lead at six. A little push inside as Nellie Cummings made his way to the basket. 6.53 to play here in the first half. And Northern Illinois, six point lead at six point difference. You can attribute that to Levi Bradley. The Inside Husky Basketball Radio Show with head coaches Mark Montgomery and Lisa Carlson continues this Thursday and every Thursday at 7 p.m. in January and February at Rosati's of DeKalb. Hear all the latest information on Husky basketball and NIU athletics. Enjoy Rosati's pizza, subs, salads, and more. Rosati's is located at the corner of Annie Glidden and Hillcrest in DeKalb. Listen to the show on WLBK AM and FM and DeKalb Sports Fan Radio in Rockford and online via TuneIn. I tell you, Dave, the start of this game is a little bit different from you see from Northern. They've got so many points in the paint, 14 of their 25, uh, and I mean off post feeds. Great steal, Thomas. And that will be points in the paint. It'll be the tip in from Gurgis Dow. Twenty-seven nineteen after. Four ties and eight lead changes. NIU starting to stretch it out here a little bit. We talked about uh, James getting a quick blow, and he is back in there. So good, good job by uh, Northern staff for getting him a uh, rest at the right time. Well, the fans thought that Wiggins had walked on his way to the basket. It was James who was getting a little bit of help there from Henry Hayes. I don't know, I think he was wiggling his way in there. Um, I'll tell you, he's, uh, he's so impressive and Northern's gonna have to double him or front him. Dave, the other thing is you gotta front him, you know, cause the guards are looking for him and the only way to keep the ball out of the post is to front him, front side with backside help or if you are gonna let him catch it, you gotta run somebody and we just call it torpedo right away to get the ball, I mean, really collapse on him. Couple of free throws for DiMaggio Wiggins. He has eight points. And how about Wiggins? His freshman season, he shot 38% from the free throw line here in his junior year. He's up to 71%. Turner, the clean steal. And that's a quick four points scored by Bowling Green. Roderick Caldwell gets that one. Just like that, the eight point lead cut in half. Henry Hayes will give it up to Thomas. NIU shooting at 55% here in the first half. Bowling Green at 43%. Bradley nearly could get the follow. Dow up over Wiggins. 
Durgis Dow was scoreless against Bowling Green two weeks ago, coming off his career high of 14 points in the loss to Akron on Saturday. See, they're letting him play one-on-one -on -one down there. Wiggins and James. Who gives it up? Wiggins will give it up to Dow. Thomas. That goes off of Falcon. Well, that was an unusual offensive look that time for Bowling Green because I don't know that Wiggins sensed that he was just had single coverage on him. Yeah, he did look kind of tentative. I would have thought he might have made a quick move, spin to the basket, and gone up strong, tried to draw a foul. He gets a foul line often. Matt Fox has come in for the first time tonight for the Falcons. Here at the five-minute mark of the first half. Remember, Eugene German has only played three minutes tonight. Did not start the game, then picked up two quick fouls. But Levi Bradley picking up the slack. He has eight points. Lacey James, nine, and there are your points in the paint, Carl. Three ball will not go. Falcons one of seven from outside the arc. James and Uju giving him some room. Well, and you know, it's the old saying, Dave, if it's not broke, why, if it's not broke, why fix it? Um, possession before, I thought that's why it was uh, a little unusual for Thomas to shoot that three off one pass. I don't think that was a good shot. They got the ball back because it went off a Bowling Green player, but I would think one pass, you're a point guard. The, the success you're having right now inside, plus Wiggins being out, you need to keep going inside if you want to increase this lead. 20 of the 31 points scored by the Huskies tonight have come inside the paint. And now Wiggins is back in the ball game. And probably because they were having uh, success in the paint scoring with him out. He draws the assignment of Lacey James. James will get the board. Emil Gerontis, height advantage inside, he wants it. Instead, Bradley. Bowling Green fans here in attendance tonight. Didn't like the lack of a whistle there. Dylan Fry has not been open tonight. This whistle comes away from the ball. Dylan Fry checking in with 41 three-pointers this season. For Bowling Green, he's only shot one tonight. 3.50 to play in the first half. Northern Illinois with that eight-point lead. They've done it by getting the ball inside. Mark Montgomery enjoying what he's seeing here early. Looking for a great university to finish your college degree? At NIU, you'll get the personal attention you deserve and the competitive edge you need to succeed. Find out more at the Transfer Open House on February 9th. Register now at niu.edu. Dave Bernhardt, Carl Armato, and Husky fans in attendance tonight here in DeKalb with Maggio Wiggins at the free throw line. Knocked down a couple there his last time. He only gets one this time. Thorpe open from the top. Wiggins will pull down his sixth rebound of the night. Final three and a half minutes here in the first half. Very important to the Falcons here on the road. Owen Green won six true road games on their opponent's home floor this season. That's the most in the MAC. They are six and two on the road. Seven and three overall when you throw in neutral site games. It's not been an easy shooting night tonight for Bowling Green. Can you stretch this to a double-digit lead? And Thorpe will do just that. There were three keys, I thought, for Northern coming in the game. They've controlled the tempo because Bowling Green averages about 70, about 80 points a game. Three-point, you know, 
keep him away from three-point line. They average almost 40% from the free three points right in the free throw line. You know, free throws. Wiggins has gotten there, but he's the only one. So Northern's done a good job in those areas. Well, numbers to back you up with that. Bowling Green just one of eight from three-point range, as, they're, as you said, near 40% of the year. And they have only shot five free throws tonight, which means Wiggins is probably not getting as many touches as the head coach in the middle of that picture right there, Michael Huger, would like. Coming up at halftime, we will talk with Senior Associate Athletic Director John Cheney. A new event coming up. We'll tease you with that. Uh, very exciting and interesting. Coming up in the month of February, John Cheney will be around to talk about it. For Bowling Green, they got to keep, uh, you know, the big three from uh, getting off. And so far, German. Only three points, but he hasn't played a lot. But uh, Bradley's done some damage, and so has James unexpectedly. Lacey James with nine points, another turnover. And the loss to Central Michigan. Falcons turned it over 18 times, and Central Michigan turned it into 25 points. Tonight, the Huskies have scored nine points off of Bowling Green turnovers, but we'll get a turnover the other way on an offensive foul. Foul situation for Northern Illinois. Gurgis Dow has two fouls. Eugene German picked up two quick fouls, only has played three minutes. Anastasios Dimagerantis with a couple of fouls. And, of course, Derek Koch for Bowling Green. He picked up two fouls in the first two minutes. It's a big 6-9 load underneath that have, his absence has hurt the Falcons. And Turner's been kind of quiet. That was a deep three. Antoine Lillard gets a second three of the night. Four bowling green. Knocks that lead into single digits. Under two to play in the first half. Bradley sees an opening. Now Turner on the move. Right now, Carl, Bowling Green just does not look comfortable in their offense. Justin Turner had the break and looked a little hesitant and ended up giving the ball over the seventh turnover of the night. Yeah, they've turned it over uh, too many times. You know, seven uh, compared to Northern's three. Um, they're going to have to do a better job taking care of the ball and getting it inside to uh, Wiggins. Northern Illinois, second in the MAC, Only 12.2 turnovers per game, third in turnover margin. And a plus 1.9 a game. Dante Tharp uses that rim. Well, he gave you an idea there, right, how athletic he is. He went up into the paint over, you know, Wiggins and a couple other players that, uh, you know, are tall and athletic. Under a minute now. Plowden, back of the iron on the three ball attempt. Tell you, if you're Mark Montgomery, your staff, you got to like this because you've done it without German. He's played three minutes here in the first half. Eugene German had a three-pointer early, and but yet it's everyone else has picked up the slack, right? I mean, Dante Thorpe, you would expect Thorpe. He comes in averaging 12.2 points a game. He has eight in the first half. Levi Bradley is right about his average with eight in one half a play. Lacey James, maybe the, the X factor here in the first half with nine. And sometimes, you know, it, depending on how a player looks at it, it could be good or bad. German could look at it like, you know what, hey, I've got some help. You know, these guys are stepping up my absence. Or he, if he comes in the second half and he says, you know what, I've got three points. I'm leading the MAC. i got to get shots up. That could disrupt the whole rhythm and flow of their offense, Dave. It will be very interesting to see what five players come on the floor to start the second half for NIU. Noah McCarty in. He'll get it back to Thorpe. It looks like uh, they're in his own. Looks like they switched up to his own bowling green. They probably figured uh, Coach Montgomery drew up a man play. Looked like it worked to their favor going to the zone. Lillard. Shot clock off. Falcons looking for that final shot of this first half. 
We're down to 10. They look for Wiggins, the catch and the score. And that's how the first half comes to a close. DiMaggio Wiggins picking up his 10th point. And Bowling Green have trailed by as many as 10. They have it within seven here after the first 20 minutes. 35-28, NIU over Bowling Green in the MAC crossover tonight from DeKalb. The home court here at the Convocation Center has been a very friendly place for the Huskies this season. NIU 7-1 on this floor, and they had that seven-point lead here at the half over Bowling Green. Hi again, everybody. Dave Fernhardt, and I'm happy to be joined by John Cheney, Associate Athletic Director here at Northern Illinois University. John, great to see you. And, and what's really exciting about this is you have an announcement to make. I mean, it's, it's been released, okay, but we haven't said anything during the first half, and I love this event that's coming up on February 18th from 3 to 5 p.m. at Allfield Auditorium, and here, here's the name I love, the NIU Football Stories from the Sidelines. Now, 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 who's invited, and how do we get people there? Sure. So it's a new event. It's somewhat taken the place of the uh, signing day event that we've had in the past, but it's for season ticket members exclusively. Uh, but uh, any new season ticket members who we'll talk a little bit about, but after February 1st, we can sign up new people as well. So just about anybody can really be a part of this. And it's uh, it's going to be at the, uh, as you said, the Old uh, Auditorium here on campus. And uh, people can go online. It's going to be on our NIUHuskies.com website, the HAF website. And there's also a release out, obviously, that we were just talking about. And they can go on that, and there's a direct link that they can go there. Now, you mentioned this is taking the place of the, the signing day party that you've had. And that's because the, the whole signing day has changed. You have two different signing right. days now. But what can folks expect to be similar to what maybe they've seen in the past? Sure. So the events, you know, the past, present, and future of NIU football is really what we're kind of pushing and get, talking about that day. And, um, you know, stories from the sideline of past players, of current players. We're going to have some of our new enrollees, at least three of the young men who signed in uh, J December are already enrolled at NIU. And so some of them will be there to talk about what the experience was. But Coach Carey, his coaching staff, they'll be there to share some of the the stories from when they were recruiting these gentlemen and about these gentlemen but we felt since everybody signed in December a lot of people already know about a lot of this class and we're not signing too many left in February so um, we wanted to add something more to it so we're bringing back some of the past players and, and current players to also add to that discussion. So, so how do you see that going with all the past? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you know the average age of the season ticket holder, but it's it's a history lesson as well for the right. new newer season ticket holder. Definitely, you know, we're we're reaching out right now to some of the past players that have played in the NFL or are currently in the NFL. Uh, some of the other players that are just in the area. Uh, we're going to have a panel discussion with them. We'll have six to eight of past players, current players, and some of our new enrollees, as I mentioned. And so we'll have a question and answer session with them and let people really ask what they want to know about you know, how NIU football was, is, and, and will be in the future. Okay, two more quick questions for you. One, and I don't know how much you can give away, but uh, the upcoming schedule, and when I say upcoming, I'm talking about the fall football sure, schedule. Sure. Uh, what can you tell us about how that's shaping up right now? Um, it's it's still in flux. We obviously don't know the exact dates of the games, for, but we do know that we're going to be playing Central Michigan, Toledo, Ohio, and Miami for the MAC teams, as well as Utah. So there's probably... In my opinion, there's a very good chance that we'll have at least four Saturday games, but you know that's not all done yet. It depends on the buys, and, and with us having a BYU game in um, October, that adjusts the schedule and some things with Maxion. But uh, we're hopeful that that will be in that that mix, and uh, there's obviously some great teams coming to to get out. So we have the NIU football stories from the sidelines. We also have Victory E Ball coming up in April. The importance of those events to Northern Illinois University and the athletic department. Sure. Well, obviously, you know, football never ends. You know, the season ended <laughs> ended on uh, December 26 for 2017, and already we're in 18 and and going strong with that. So we really want these events to be the fan engagement. You know, it keeps going year round. Uh, it's the opportunity to the fans to really know what's going on with NIU football, to ask those questions, to be involved and just be around our coaches and our players. And not just football, the victory balls for all of our sports. 
Um, so you know, it's really an engagement with them. It's their program. We're just here trying to help run it, but uh, the alumni and, and the Curtin former players and students, it's their programs, and we're just stewards for those. And so it's a chance for them to be engaged, and obviously financially it's huge for us to get season ticket members and donations and support of the athletic programs through these events as well just through purchasing tickets and, and making donations towards our scholarship fund and those type of things so it's just an opportunity to to add some value and add an opportunity for them to really get to know the people that they're supporting john appreciate you taking some time out here at halftime great event just announced today yes it is we're excited about it very good john cheney senior associate athletic director in charge of internal operations here at NIU, and we can tell you that season ticket members are invited to join the Husky football coaching staff, current student athletes like Sutton Smith and Max Sharping, several former stars and others at this new event, NIU football, stories from the sidelines. This exclusive event will take place on Sunday, February 18th from 3 to 5 p.m. in Altgeld Hall on the NIU campus. Cost is $75 per person or $550, you will get an entire table. There'll be a panel discussion with a question and answer period, a look at the 2018 signing class, a preview of spring football, silent auction, cash bar, and more. Just call 815-753-1923 or go online today to register at NIUHuskies.com. It's basketball season right now and we're at the half in Northern Illinois on top of Bowling Green, 35-28. Highlights and stats coming up next. Northern Illinois looking even their record at 10 and 10. They lead by seven at the half. Last time these two teams played, Northern Illinois only scored 19 points in the first half. That was en route to the loss in Ohio to the Falcons. Right now, Mark Montgomery likes what he sees on that sheet and the score that he's looking at, 35-28. Dave Bernhardt along with Carl Armato. And Carl, here are your first half stats. Yeah, and the most impressive thing, I think, with Northern and uh, what's uh, enabled them to get this lead is the uh, points in the paint, Dave. They have really done a good job of getting the ball inside to James, who uh, you know we talked about, he's already exceeded his average in in, in Bradley, and uh, for Bowling Green, you know they've got it. They've got to get the ball inside, and they've got to get the line. Only four, uh, five from the free throw line. Uh, usually, um, Wiggins has that by the first uh, ten minutes of the game, and so um, they've got to pound the ball inside, and he's got to be more aggressive. And uh, I look for that in the second half. Take take a look at our impact players that we. Have just talked about a little bit. There's DiMaggio Wiggins. The big number on the board, each of those two, who would have come into this game after one half thinking that each of these two players, James and Wiggins, would have had the exact number of shot attempts? Right, that is a very good point. Uh, you would think Wiggins, you know, would have at least double-digit shot attempts. Um, and he may end up, you know, in the second half going off. But if you're Northern, you got to look at, hey, focusing your old defense around him. Maybe throw a different look. They they didn't really double commit to it. They showed a little bit. I would think they're going to give a different look to throw him off balance. And if you're Bowling Green, you got to be aware that, hey, German's coming back and probably going to play. He's starting second half. And how do we contain him as well as the rest of the players that are doing well for Northern? So be interesting. It'd be a great to see how these coaches um, make the adjustments coming out of halftime, Dave. So you have Eugene German, conference leading score at 19 and a half per game. He has just three after one half of play, a couple of fouls and foul trouble. DiMaggio Wiggins just three rebounds shy of going for his sixth straight double-double. And I'll go on record saying unless he gets hurt, he'll get it. <laughs> Dylan Fry quickly up the floor. Fry has been quiet tonight, just one basket. Eric Koch gets the touch. Koch only played two minutes in that first half. Big rebounder inside, coming off a double-digit scoring game. Wiggins gets the early touch. This is balanced scoring attack for Bowling Green on the season. Four players averaging in double figures. And 81 points per game, or about 80 points per game for the Falcons. Held to just 28 in the first half. Turnover, Bradley has Dow behind him, but it will be Levi Bradley heading to the free throw line. 
And a technical foul is called underneath. If that's on German, he already had two coming in this half. That'll be three. Let's see how our officials sort this one out. One of the men involved was number five there, Dylan Fry. Fry, a little frustration from turning the ball over on the offensive end. Yeah, this is a pretty crucial decision right here. Interested to see who this is on, Dave. It looked like they called it on German. Mm, okay, so Eugene German, a little contact, and then the push-off from Dylan Fry. Which has totally uncalled for. Ball was dead. There was no excuse for that. That's just a bad decision by that young man. And it's, you know what? And that could cost his team. Okay, so it is technical each way on Fry and German. So Eugene German just picked up that third personal foul. Or the third foul. Two of them personal, one a technical. Levi Bradley, though, at the free throw line for two. Justin, Justin Turner, who started this game for NIU, will replace German. Speak of free throw shooters, Levi Bradley, 83% on the season. Turner, Fry, nothing but the bottom of the net for Dylan Fry. And I always like to see how a, a young man responds to adversity like that with that pushing. And Fry was involved in that, and he hits a three. You might have woke up a uh, sleeping giant there. Fry, 2.3 three-pointers per game. That's his first tonight. Dow passes out of the double team. James. Oh, he kisses it off the glass to beat the shot clock. James continues to be impressive tonight. Playing with a great deal of confidence against the junior, DiMaggio Wiggins. Yeah, with that clock winding down, he stayed very poised. On Bowling Green. Facing an eight-point deficit. Coke. And Dow could not handle it. Now well, speaking of folks who have been quiet tonight, Justin Turner comes in averaging 16.2 points per game. Turner with just a couple of baskets in the first half. Caldwell. Remember, this is a team, Bowling Green, they can shoot it from the outside. Yeah, they they were kind of quiet from the three in the first half. Uh, you know, you don't want to fall asleep on them because they can stroke it from the perimeter. Knocked down a couple here in the first couple of minutes of the second half. Nice pick right there from Turner. A three on two. Trailer, Caldwell. Now the break goes the other way. Numbers against Bradley. Bradley goes in, goes out, goes in, and Levi Bradley lays it in for his 12th point of this game. And did we get another technical foul called here? Technical foul. Levi Bradley picked up the technical. Justin Turner at the line. So Justin Turner will go shoot a couple of free throws for the Falcons. Bradley will have a seat. Noah McCarty comes in to replace him. Yeah. 
That Turner, Turner struggled all night from the offensive end. Justin Turner tonight, two of six from the floor. He's missed all three of his three-point shots and now misses his only two free throw attempts he's had. And they're going to need him to step up. Second half down by uh, seven here. Turner on Thorpe. No room for Fry. Turner. And Dow will come away with it. Excellent defensive possession for Northern Illinois. Thorpe will take it right in on Wiggins. Falcons pushing. Fry just inside the arc. Well, we've had a flurry of misses here. Now both teams playing hard. They've on the defensive end. I'm impressed with both teams the way we're de they're defending tonight. James. It's almost like you can sense it's a big game for both of them, you know, to, to stay uh, in the standings. Three and three for Bowling Green. Two and four in the conference for Northern Illinois. Of course, the league leaders, the division leaders, Buffalo with a 6-0 mark. Toledo at 5-1 in the West. Wiggins will head to the line. See, I would think with the way Bowling Green has struggled with tonight, especially Turner fed it in, that you would double him right away and just get it out, dig it out of his hands. So not much movement from our halftime score. We've had three technicals, however. 41-34. Lacey James having a night. The Husky basketball teams are on the road this weekend, but there is still great NIU sports action right here at the Convocation Center. Fans are invited to be our guests Sunday at 2 p.m. for the Beauty and the Beast meet, featuring both the NIU gymnastics and wrestling teams. Gymnastics will take on Central Michigan, and on the adjacent mat, the Husky wrestling team will battle North Dakota State, all in the main arena. The mission is free, and several special promotions are going on. Get all the details now at NIUHuskies.com. Two straight misses for Wiggins, and he'll get that free throw. 11 points for Wiggins to go along with seven rebounds. Falcons hanging around. Trailed by as many as 10. Opening the floor up a little bit. Burgess Dow. Give it up to Thomas. Now Thorpe, single digits on the shot clock. McCarty, Noah McCarty buries the three. Boy, looking at his body and his size, you'd think that's the last place he'd be scoring from, and there he knocks down a three. That is only his sixth three-pointer of the season. And NIU denies Wiggins the touch. Five on four advantage here for the Huskies. McCarty outside, now inside. And I'll tell you, I like Thorpe at the point, Dave. You know, German I don't think is a point guard. Thomas, but I really like Thorpe because of his size, his quickness, and his ability to create in the lane. Noah McCarty, the recipient of an assist from Thorpe for three. He gets a layup for two, and it's a nine-point lead for NIU. The NIU women's basketball team returns home on Wednesday, January 31st to take on Miami with tip-off at 6 p.m. while the Huskies men's basketball team is back in action in the Convocation Center on Saturday, February 3rd. Game time at 3.30 p.m. Make plans now and buy tickets online at NIUHuskies.com. The women back here on Wednesday, one week and a day from now, January 31st. I thought that was a good timeout day by Coach uh 
Huger, uh, they needed it. We'll see how they respond. Well, if his body language is any indication, he had two hands to his head. That is not what he had in mind, obviously. No, no, because you come out of that timeout, run the set play. Hopefully something you're confident you think is going to work, and then you get a moving screen. That's a turnover. Uh, Michael Huger's third season. Great point guard for the Falcons back in the late 80s, early 90s. Went and played in Europe for a while. McCarty hammered by Uju. Noah McCarty has made his presence felt. 6'7", sophomore from Rock Falls and Sterling Newman High School. Well, Jeffrey Uju, 6'7", redshirt junior from Bolingbrook and Oak Hill Academy, also a transfer from Western Texas College. He hasn't seen too many minutes tonight, and when he's been on the floor, the Huskies have attacked him. And Wiggins is getting a little blow, but uh, I know Coach uh, Huger would like to sit him out a little bit longer, but, you know, if they keep adding to this lead, you're going to have to bring that horse back into the game. Uh, Uju will leave, but Daquan Plowden will replace him. 6'6 six, six freshman from Philadelphia. Noah McCarty. Seven points. They've all come in the last couple of minutes. And the combination of him and James has been really good tonight. James with 11 points, nine of those in the first half. McCarty with seven, and the lead at its biggest of the night at 13. Plowden, big steps into the lane. First basket of the night for Daquan Plowden. McCarty thought he had another one right there. Turner, wide open three. Good rebound by Lillard. And Levi Bradley, that's the body language of somebody that's just been caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah, he gave him a forearm, which, uh, you know, with the chirping that's been going on and the double technicals, Dave, and the technical... You know, by Bradley, they're looking for that now. So you've got to know, you've got to adjust and know the officials are not going to let anything like that get away with. Three fouls now on Bradley and German. Bradley will leave. Four fouls on Uju. Here's a little turnaround from Derek Koch. His first basket of the night, big time rebounder. See a little life on uh, Bowling Green here out of their bench and their players. Cutting into that double-digit lead. Henry Hayes onto the floor once again for NIU. He'll get it to Thomas. Now Henry Hayes in the wing. James on Coke. Two-handed block from Plowden. There's number 25 just hanging around. Six seconds showing on the shot clock. Thomas able to roll it in. Big shot there. The shot clock winded down. He got that off just in time. Thomas five points tonight. The lead at double digits again. James just rips it out of there. Wonder how long Michael Huger can keep Wiggins on the bench. Well, we'll get an immediate timeout coming up here in about 10 seconds. And the reverse from Thomas. And I think that's when we'll see him go back in at the media timeout, Dave. Don't reach, don't reach. Maybe if he's in there, Wiggins Thomas doesn't feel confident enough to go in there and lay it in off the uh, glass in the paint. It's clean strip. From Thomas. Now a three on one. To Thorpe. Turner the other way. But for Northern Illinois, the turnover, the 11th of the night for Bowling Green, turns into points. 
11 turnovers for the Falcons. The Huskies have turned them into 19 points tonight. And it is a 15 point lead with the 11.34 to play. Justin Thomas making things happen. Here the dish. The next men's home game comes up on February 3rd and rumor has it the promotion will be Carl Armato in one of those bubble balls. So uh, sign up folks and get a chance to, to knock Carl around on this convocation center floor. I gotta make sure my insurance policy is up to date for my wife and kids because I don't <laughs> think I could survive one of those blows. They, <laughs> they, they do this every game, but boy were they ripping it tonight. There's a the men's game next time up. That's Miami. And you know what? This game, there's a lot of time left, so uh, before it's over, these two teams could be knocking heads like that down to the final two minutes. Again, these are uh, teams that need a win badly here in league play. Northern Illinois have dropped four of their last five games, five of the last seven, and Bowling Green. And Wiggins is back in. You talked about the uh, media timeout, and I think that's what Coach was looking at. Give him a little rest. I think he'll go the whole stretch now, Dave. This team is down by 14. Demo Gerontis, long strides in the glass. I'll tell you, Northern tonight has gotten production out of their bench players, Dave, and they've needed it with German averaging, you know, 20, 20 points a game. He's only got uh, one basket. That came early in this game. It was a three. And it is Dante Thorpe just took it away from Wiggins. Good decision by Demo Gerontis. And that's what I like about Thorpe run the point. He, did, he could have taken that shot, but he pitched out open on the wing. And now the run low clock with a lead. Smart decision by Thorpe. James takes it right up on Wiggins. 13 points tonight for Lacey James. Come on, defense. Now right now he's MVP of the game if this score holds up. 18 point lead, the biggest of the night. Loudon will go to the free throw line. Um, that was a great pass by Wiggins. Saw the double coming and he rotated it to the weak side for a layup and they had to foul him. Great pass by Wiggins. Season high for Lacey James and of course career high for the transfer from Ryder University. Dave, when I played that was my season high. <laughs> German back in along with Dow, Thomas, and Thorpe will leave for Northern Illinois. Bowling Green just six of 12 from the free throw line tonight. This is a team that leads the MAC, 24th in the country with 347 made free throws this year, and they're under 500 here tonight. Yeah, that's surprising, very surprising. We got German back in the game at the point. You know, when we were talking about this, I believe, at halftime, about somebody like Eugene German, so used to scoring and being involved in 30 minutes of the game, the idea that would this be a situation where he may start pressing to make up for lost minutes? That's a very, very good point. So far, he's handled well. Rod Henry Hayes gets that basket. A 20-point game with nine and a half to play. 60 to 40. Put those 40 points in perspective. This is a Bowling Green team that came in averaging 79.8 points per game. And you can see the frustration, not on just Camacho Wiggins' face, but frustration on a lot of these Falcons here tonight. Yeah, and you know, that's a, that's a classic situation of Wiggins trying to do too much, trying to get that 20-point lead back in one shot. And you know, you feel bad for the young man. He's played well, he's a great player, but you look up the board and you want to help your team win. And, and you know what, he just forced it there. Wiggins, four of five from the floor. So he has not had a shot attempt tonight. And that traveling call, collision in the backcourt. James will finish it on this side of the floor.
Lacey James from Demo Gerontis. And another look. Well, you mentioned it, the player of the game. There's still nine minutes to play here, but Lacey James, you get the sense he has his coming out party here tonight. Well, in Northern, they've shown you their depth. They've used a lot of players tonight. Um, I would think that uh, Bowling Green's going to have to probably do something out of their element, which they're probably going to have to pick up full court press. You got to do something to try and turn this around. You only got nine minutes left. You got to pick up the tempo, and I would I would expect them to press full court after makes, dead balls, free throws, and we'll see how Northern handles the pressure. They almost had a steal down at this end, but two Bowling Green players ran into one another, and Northern recovered it. How about Lacey James tonight with those 15 points, also has four rebounds. The last time these two teams played, just two weeks ago, James was scoreless. He is doing it against Maggio Wiggins. You know, you look at the scouting report on that, Dave, and they probably had very little to say about James and everything to say about German. And look, roles are reversed. Nine different players have played for Northern Illinois, and the player that's played the fewest minutes is the max leading scorer, Eugene German. He had the lead at 22. Now back to 20 after Nellie Cummings gets it to go. And here we go with the full court pressure on the ball. They're probably going to trap. Lillard on Dow. Burgess Dow, born in South Sudan, moved to Australia when he was six years old. Bradley has it rejected, but a foul. A little body mixed in there. Yeah, I think the uh, player that reached in might have got him on the wrist. You saw the ball flat of his hands. That's usually a sign that he grabbed his wrist. If you're Northern, this is the man you want at the line. Levi Bradley, 82%. Well, it's nice when you get one of your 6-7 players and can knock it down at over 80%. He's 4 for 4 tonight. Well, I tell you, they're going to have to they're going to have to knock down several threes. Kind of do what Central Michigan did to them, yeah. Dave. You know, last game they're going to have to hit four or five threes here. They've not had too many good looks though this evening. Boy, Wiggins really trying for the ball, but James will have none of it inside. There's a three. It will go for Matt Fox, the only senior on this roster. His first points of the night. How about Fox? He walked on at Bowling Green and. 2014-15 season, got a scholarship last year. He's a guy that can light it up. He had six threes against Eastern Michigan. Well, you work hard, Dave, and good things happen. German, not much rotation, but it hits nothing but the bottom of the net for Eugene German, his second three of the night. That's one of those as a coach you're thinking. Do we really want that shot? Do we need it? And it goes in, and you're like, oh my gosh. Wiggins will get the rebound, credit for the rebound, his eighth of this game to go along with the 11 points. We're under eight minutes to play here in the first half. Eugene German, not many minutes, but it goes. Did you know NIU has eliminated higher out-of-state tuition rates so it's never been more affordable to attend Northern Illinois University, whether you're from Illinois or anywhere else in the country. NIU offers more than 100 traditional degree programs, programs full-time and part-time enrollment, as well as online programs. Learn more at NIU.edu. DiMaggio Wiggins to the free throw line, trying to make some something happen here with the clock stopped with 7.39 to play. Well, if he knocks these down, it gives them opportunity to full court press. Yeah, you gotta knock those down, Dave. Yep. Yeah. 
German again. Now the gambling defense starting to open up the floor a little bit. Eugene German makes the Falcons pay. And you know what? That's like a layup for him. 70 to 45. The lead continues to grow. And now Bowling Green just firing it up. German again. Here it goes. German tonight is four for four from the floor. They've all been outside the arc, and he's done it in just seven minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, he shoots the ball with such confidence, and he is he is fun to watch. But in a close game, Dave, are those again, are those the shots that you want your players taking? <laughs> Especially on the road. Maybe they maybe got to figure out at home good, but on the road, don't take those. <laughs> well, it's worked out all right for him here on this floor. NIU this year, 8-1 and one on this floor. And they're about ready to head to 3-0 and oh in the conference right here in DeKalb. Roderick Caldwell reaches double figures. He joins Wiggins. Now each of those two players have 11 points. Seventy-three to forty-seven. Oh, a cutting Thorpe from Bradley. Tell you what, I am really impressed with Thorpe. The other way, Dylan Fry. Fry's got a great looking jump shot, great rotation. I love uh, how he shoots the ball. It's pretty to watch. Thomas will try his hand at it. He'll knock it down. Tell you what, you know who else could play a little bit of point is Bradley. He passes the ball extremely well. He's got good uh, court vision. Now a chance for a 30-point lead. He's pulling up. Here it comes. Down it goes. You know what, it is. It's a what a shooting exhibition tonight from Eugene German. My goodness. German did not start this game, got into foul trouble, Got in a little bit here in the second half, and in eight minutes, he has 15 points. As soon as I saw that defender take a step or two back, because you got to respect the fact he's so fast, I knew he was pulling up. <laughs> now, here's the thing you got to tell your team you know, you could face these guys again in the tournament, and you don't want any, you want to put any uh, material up on that board, and you know what? So, you got to be careful here. I mean, I, the game is getting out of hand. And now you got to run clock, you know, run your offense. Uh, you don't want to rub salt in the wound. Even now, with 5:35 to play in this ball game, Northern Illinois is working on a 46-point second half. 35 in the first half, 46 more in the second half. The first time these teams met this year, two weeks ago, NIU was held to just 19 points in the first half. That led eventually to a 66-57 loss in Ohio. Okay, I got a question for you, Dave. Do you start, Mr. German, the next game? I mean, this is a perfect game plan. Yeah. You've got balance scoring. You have what, four, five, five in double figures. You've scored inside. You've defended well. Your shot selection has been pretty good. I mean, that's something to think about. Well, you brought up the point earlier, Carl. It was when uh, German was battling some foul problems and such that Michael Huger, the head coach for Bowling Green, was going to have to do some thinking as he was headed to the second half because he knew he was going to see German. He didn't see him at all in the first half. Here's Fry for three. Scramble time here for the Falcons. Coke. He's going to get another shot at it. 
and instead it's Thorpe. And looking for Eugene German. Well, Demario Wiggins not on the floor right now. He may be done for the night. I'm not sure about that. Wiggins could see that double-double streak end at five straight games if he doesn't come back. 11 points, eight rebounds tonight for the 6'10 junior. Well, if they do meet for a third time later this year, there'll be, there definitely will be some memories. We've had, a, what, three technical fouls called here tonight. That's a pretty physical play. Remember, this is a Bowling Green team that overall on the season, seven and three in road games, but in games on opponents' home floors, six and two record. And Coach Montgomery and staff done a great job uh, getting his team prepared to play in the absence or, you know, starting uh, leading score in the MAC. However, as this gets towards the uh, media timeout for a minute, I would think of emptying my bench, getting these kids that don't normally get an opportunity to play, get them out there and get them some minutes. 81 to 50. Plus, you don't want to run the risk, Dave, of, of having somebody get hurt now in a meaningless score. Thor just looked to hit iron. He did. Caldwell on the open floor. Nifty move for Roderick Caldwell. 13 points for Caldwell. Seven of them coming here in the second half. German will score on the drive. German had three points in the first half. He has 14 here in the second half. 17 for the game. 19.5 point per game average coming in. And it continues. Eugene German putting on a second half show. Uh, he's playing like he's on a playground now in Gary. And they have some epic battles in the Gary <laughs> playgrounds. <laughs> I mean, he's playing free and loose and easy. And we're under four minutes, but Mark Montgomery said, hey, let's get a timeout. Let's get some other folks in the ball game. What a scintillating ball game for Eugene German. That first ball was the only points of the first half. This is all second half and it leads to a 33 point lead. How do you take a seven point halftime lead to a 33 point difference? By making your shots. How about this Carl? Out of the last 16 shots Northern Illinois has taken, they have made 15. I am not kidding you. They have made 15 of their last 16 shots. And there have been some difficult shots, David. And, and Bowling Green's playing hard. So it's not like they've had easy opportunities. That's just an amazing stat. And I'll tell you what, this game, even though it's 30 points, um, close 30-point deficit, it's still been entertaining because of the offense. <laughs> On the other side, Bowling Green... Almost 30 points below their average. We still have three minutes to play. Owen Hamilton into the ball game, working in the low post. Uh, I wonder if this is a record for Northern. 16 out of 17? Mm, that is amazing. Ten different players have scored tonight for the Huskies. Whistle and the score. Basketball go to Janiah Gadsden. Yeah, I think there was some extracurricular activity after this one. Yep, Gadsden, a little elbow to the chest of Hamilton. I'll tell you what, they're going to look at that, and I'll bet it's a flagrant one. Well, they're talking to the. Michael Huger right there. He inadvertently on the spin, Dave, hit him. 
with his elbow in the side when he spun around. But then after he made it, he threw an intentional. I don't know no, if they're going to look at it. Are. Nope, I don't believe they are. Here's a look at it again. Instead, they will, well, they put Gadsden at the line. Did they call a technicon? I would think there'd be people at line if they didn't. Right. In the uh, free throw lane. Because the basket went in, so he gets one free throw. That just adds to the woes tonight for Bowling Green. Falcons 9 of 19 from the line, and Gadsden did get called for a technical foul. That sends Gurgis Dow to the line. And you've got to compliment the officials. They've been consistent with that all night, Dave. That's the second or third one. They don't want to get it out of hand, you know, so they want the uh, tempers not to flare up. Everybody uh, make sure they're uh, safe and nobody's going to get hurt. You know, if you were with us right at the beginning of the ball game, they were very tight on their calls. The officials were tight on their calls in the paint. And you, you said they have maintained that consistency all night long. 89-54. Don't think too many folks would have expected this as they walked into the Convocation Center tonight. Justin Thomas, remember a long time ago when he started this game in place of German. Still bring it up against Caldwell. Now to Dow. Henry Hayes has gotten some time tonight. Working this shot clock down to single digits. Seven to shoot. And Hamilton will. And again, a shot goes down. For Northern Illinois, 62%, 78% here in the second half, and that's a gimme. Demo Gerontis with the slam. This run offensively around is amazing. It's just incredible. A 58-point second half. Now into the game, Brandon Donowski, number 55 right there. Donowski, 5'11", freshman from Wilmette, Illinois. Lillard, he'll knock it down. You know, and you look at the score, Dave, and we talked about it. You know, they had that big lead against Central Michigan and fell apart. And you know what? What does that do to your confidence? You go on the road, and, uh, boy, I tell you, this got away quick. But uh, in the Northern, this will do a lot for their confidence. Well, in that game against Central Michigan, Bowling Green saw the Chippewas make seven of eight three-pointers. They turn around here a few nights later, and they see NIU make – what was it? One starts 16 of 17 from the floor. That's a great point. You know, and if I'm Michael Huger, I'm not even sure what I can say to my team. I mean, it, I mean, sure, their defense or, or what have you, but my goodness. I mean, well, I can tell you one thing as a former coach, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't show him the film. <laughs> There's Michael Huger in his third season. I would, I'd pitch it in the trash, and I'd say, let's next game, short memory. Well, that next game will take the Falcons to Toledo. Rockets leading the West Division coming into tonight's play. They 5-1 and one mark. And you know what? As close as those two uh, schools are, that's, that's, I wouldn't consider that going on the road.
DeAndre Austin into the game. He will give it off here to Lillard. And Donowski a little bit of hold on the way to the basket. Season high points scored for Northern Illinois tonight at 93. Tell you what, and uh, you know, Coach Huger's done a great job. You know, he's coached throughout. Uh, his character, you know, personality has not changed. You know, I love his demeanor, and uh, they'll they'll put this in the back of their mind. They'll remember it. And I can remember uh, last year a uh, UConn, you know, uh, women. They pounded Mississippi State by 60 points in the tournament, close 60 the previous year, and Mississippi State went in and beat them yep. in the semis. You know, I will make a correction. Actually, NIU scored 95 against Chicago State earlier this season. That came all the way back on December 2nd. You know, at this point, and it's, you know, how much do you learn? You go into a game like this, you know, and you got you to gotta tell, okay, what can we learn from this game? Where did it get away? Was it on the offensive end? Was it on the defensive end? Was it in our preparation? I'm sure Coach Huger and his staff, they're going to look at every detail, uncover every stone to find out how can we prevent this from happening again. That's what good coaches and programs do. There's the upcoming schedule for the Falcons. That trip to Toledo. Home games against Ohio and Kent State. And then we get into that February MAC battle. Boy, we are, this season is really moving rapidly along. Sure is. And if you're Northern, you find a way to get this game ball and bring it wherever you go <laughs> and make sure that it's the exact same game ball you play with from here on out. Northern Illinois University, a dominating second half. A second half that saw the Huskies make 22 of 29 shots for 76%, scored 58 points. And they even up their overall mark at 10 and 10, 3 and 4 in the conference with a 93 62 win. Bowling Green drops to 12 and 8 overall, 3 and 4 in MAC play. And, you know, I feel like we've talked about five, six different players. You had Lacey James that got things going and then it was Eugene German that ends up with 19 points right at his season's average. Five players in double figures tonight for NIU there. The final statistics at 61%. The big one there and 50 points in the paint for NIU and that's when you throw after you throw in all these three pointers. Eight made threes tonight for the Huskies. Well Dave, who's your MVP? I will say Lacey James for what he did in the first half and uh, set up the second half. I'll back you up on that. I agree with you 100%. All right, well, that's going to do it tonight. There is Lacey James. So for Carl Armato, I'm Dave Bernhardt saying so long from the NIU Convocation Center where the final score is Northern Illinois 93, Bowling Green 62. Now to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN.